Alright, hello everybody, this is Scott, and today we're actually going to be going over the 360 Internet Security Engines, and I'm going to be explaining to you which ones are from which, and which ones do better at doing what. The 360 Cloud Engine, this is their antivirus engine. It is a very powerful engine, because it collaborates data from millions of users, hundreds and millions of users use this program. I believe it was 450 million active users are using it. They own like the entire Chinese market for it. And now that they're in America, they're actually growing in popularity. But this is going to be the main, the main defense of your uh, engine, of your computer. And it's going to, it always requires internet access for it to work. Um, it's a very powerful engine. It's mostly good at protecting from websites malicious websites uh, phishing sites are also in the database however it did not score too well on the virus uh, bulletin I believe it barely passed borderline but I did get a, almost a perfect score on the AV test antivirus protection and then we have the QVM2 engine which is another cloud based engine but doesn't work in a traditional manner while the other ones are going to be blocking websites, the QVM2 doesn't really do that. It generally will analyze the auto start programs. It, you'll generally say it'll be analyzing auto start, memory items, and uh, possibly downloaded files or files that are trying to run. But you don't see it blocking websites. If you do, it's probably going to either be between Bitdefender and or the Cloud Engine. But you'll never see a pop-up saying that QVM2 pr protected you against a malicious site. It's just not built for that. Then your third and final one, which doesn't need internet access, is the Bitdefender Engine. And the Bitdefender Engine is the best antivirus engine on the market. And um, they can, they've licensed it to many companies. But um, Bitdefender is just an awesome engine. It literally will block anything. Need not like it'll block anything, but it covers the a broad the lo the largest scope of malware. So anything that's any any type of malware, it'll be able to detect. As opposed to the QVM2, which you generally only see it doing auto start or programs trying to run. And then you're gonna be saying, well, if it has all these engines, why is it? that the program only got a 5.5 .5 out of 6 instead of the perfect score. Okay. <clears throat> when it comes to blocking the malware, you have to realize that even if it has that Bitdefender engine, it doesn't mean that it's going to get the Bitdefender engine. What do I mean? Bitdefender says you have the right to use our database. You have the right to access any of our items and use them in your program. You pay them whatever, however much they charge, you get to use it. The problem is you have to have them download it. And you you won't always have the really most recent database. As you can see, with my Bitdefender engine, I'm always one day behind. They always release it one day behind because of the time zone differences. So, therefore, it's not going to be as safe, but also it's the way that it integrates it. And while they have the same engine, Bitdefender is a smarter technology. It works some, It works in a smarter way than any other antivirus. And my biggest problem was with the Photon was that it was just a memory hog, and it slowed everything down. And as I started to realize how the program functioned, I understood what was behind it. The Photon technology literally monitors your computer. It will monitor, it tries to monitor everything. It is a centralized thing, so nothing on your computer should do anything unless Bitdefender knows. And during the initial setup, yeah, it's going to be slow. It has to gain all that information. So everything that goes on, it has to get and collect. So then they generally said after about one to two weeks, your computer should return to normal. <laughs> I don't have that kind of patience, but yes, that is a smarter technology than the traditional. It scans and monitors every. Just it. Like if we could measure it by intelligence, we have AVG at the bottom with GFI, the Viper. Spybot is dead. They're they're brain dead. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna make a quick list. At the top of the list, we have our smart programs. Bitdefender, 360, Kaspersky, 
or maybe Avast. Avast can actually be midline. Those are the smart programs, along with Komodo. Well, Komodo is actually middle. Why would you say Komodo is middle? Because it's stupid when it comes to their false positives. It, it, I feel like if you were to make this like a kid, you say, get the circle, uh, get all the circles. And then you say, okay, Bit Defender gets all the circles with no false, with no squares. Then we have Komodo, who literally picks up all the circles and most of the squares. That's what Komo that's what it's like to use Komodo. So, it, it only gets middle because it's only, like, it's not as smart as we want it to be. 360 gets it because of the way that its engines work and monitor the system, and the fact that it uses three different engines company was able to successfully use three different engines and they could technically add more I believe the Chinese version of it has more or maybe they bought one I don't know and just integrated it but yes they could technically add more it's because of the way they set it up why did I put a vast nor a vast Norton the not the middle the middle guys uh, Panda is pretty stupid actually nah Panda can go middle too. Basically, all like the mid-named ones that you know, the common ones, like Bullguard, all those very like mid-popular ones are in the middle. Why? Because they detect malware, but they're kind of like very bad. They have ba bad detection rates compared to the uh, big ones. They don't detect as much malware, and they don't function as intelligently. The reason I was torn between giving Avast the higher and the lower rank was only because of its poor test scores. Avast has a very smart system. The way its shields works, very nice. The way the program is integrated, very nice. It's just very poor at detecting. And the bottom one, you can use SpyBot's not even, a, well actually it is an antivirus program, SpyBot. Incredibly stupid program. Uses way too much RAM. Freaking is a memory hog, it's just a memory hog in the end of itself and it's it just needs to die I feel like someone needs to buy SpyBot and then like fix it and then make it like open source or something because it's just a very I don't know what goes on at Safer Networking but the whole like few people that they have don't know what they're doing they're not smart why would I use a program that has had issues with detecting malware in the past when they just bought the Bitdefender engine and slapped it on? I can't do that. <clears throat> so that is kind of why I don't like SpyBot. Then we have Viper. Viper, it, it, it's got really bad test scores. Like the program fluctuates on it. The, the thing just literally you flip a coin one day it does good then you flip the net you flip it again and it just sucks it has no consistency <clears throat> AVG I'm sorry but this program sucks for detecting malware the thing gets some of the worst scores and it just isn't smart there's nothing smart about the program it's just very simple I feel like the technology behind it is outdated. And then you're going to be wondering, oh, where's Windows Defender? We're measuring intelligence here. It, there is no intelligence behind Windows Defender. It has failed, I believe, almost uh, five times in a row on the EV test on its malware protection. The program gets no updates. It has no smart technology in it. It's just a really stupid and sucky program. It uses more RAM than Avast or Win or 360, and it just sucks with protection. Therefore, it doesn't even deserve to be on the same list because it's just that bad. So there you go. If you have any more questions, please ask them in the comments below, and I will try to answer them. So thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.